Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Five Nation. Today we're here to watch another video. We have not seen this cat in a minute. Mr. GG. Haven't seen videos since he his music video on uh, the Old Town Remix, which yours truly happened to make an appearance in. So let's go ahead. Oh, and if you guys want to go ahead and see that video, I'll put it probably somewhere like up here at the end of the video. So today we're here to watch another Predator Chronicle. It's been a minute, hot minute, and it is called She Lured Me. This is the Predator Chronicles episode 21. I'm not really going in order with any, with any of these, so. But yeah, let's go ahead and um, check this out. I can't wait to hear the jokes and the commentary from yours truly. So let's get into this in three, two, one. Hey everyone, it's Chris Hansen with Crime Watch Daily, and I want to show you my commute to work today. They're calling it the Cyclone Bomb, otherwise known as the snowstorm of 2018. I'm all layered up as opposed to people who we cover on our show who are lawyered up usually. <laughs> so a lot of people have asked me if I've uh, stopped making the Predator Chronicles videos in general. And no, no, I'm still going. Welcome to episode 21 of the Predator be a shame Chronicles. If you did. I am your host, Mr. Gigi. Today we are hitting the Flagler Beach investigation. I'm Ricky Berwick from the internet. Why don't we have a seat over there? These are the Predator Chronicles. It's Christmas time in Flagler Beach, Florida, where the greatest predator ah, Florida. comes swooping in. The most the interesting so, so, state. Think about it. Santa's the U.S. Been has in the kids' probably. houses, bringing them stuff they've asked for, while being offered chocolate chip cookies way before these fucking guys did it. Our first predator in line is Mohammed. Screen name: Blondie nine one nine seven two. Then he says he wants to perform oral sex on her. It will be nice. I think you will love it but you will need to open your legs all the way. Chris has clearly had a terrible week here because he comes in bearing no fucks. Look at this encounter. Better yet, look at Chris. Look at those bags. The student has become the master. What made you come on over here tonight? I was just the vessel right there. Yeah, and so you just happened to be going by and you saw this blonde woman out there and she waved at you. <laughs> Yes, she waved. That explains me. everything, doesn't it? She waved at me. She just I'm, waved at I'm you. I'm thinking she owns the house. I would try yeah. to tell her what is it, and they just yeah. she say, "Come in, come, come in." in. Come and so in. you just walk right in. No, not just walk. In. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so she waves and he, he says to come on in, and you just walk right in. I mean, that kind of explains the reason why you're sitting right here. I mean, why else would there be a reason? I mean. You say she said, come on in. Why are you here? It's the same question that every time these predators end up walking into the house. They give you an excuse, but it doesn't clear the fact that you came. You, you freaking came. You see, I'll go ahead and adjust this camera real quick. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Yeah, this chair is short. I should have went and got the other chair, but show goes on. Just the why I ask her, you know, what, what's this door? Like, what an amazing coincidence. Yeah, you know. <laughs> You're a lucky guy. You're just oh. driving along and this good-looking young girl waves you in. That's amazing. Dang, man. Must have been a complete pussy magnet. Jeez. Of age, pussy magnet. I mean, uh, but still. Um... Yeah, there's no, there, there is no excuse for what you have committed, sir. You, I mean, there is nothing you could possibly say to excuse why you came to a underage girl's house while she's home alone, which you've chatted with her online because they, they have the logs, sir. They have the chat logs. Just slap them right down the, slap them right down the table, Chris. We already know you want to. You know, something about your story sounds fishy. Unsubscribe. Chris 
shows Muhammad photos of himself asking if that's him. And Muhammad says, That looks like me. Yeah. It looks then he shows him pictures of his dick, asking if that's his dick. And Muhammad says, That looks like me too. Yeah, that one? Yep. That one? It looks. You're supposed to lie. I'm not going to add every. You're supposed to lie. You don't go around saying, agreeing with everything. It's like, yeah, that's me too. He even look at him. He looks even impressed by his own by his own his own size. Like, bro, wait. There's what? There's a time to be impressed, and there's a time to be not impressed. This is just one of those times where you just can't just marvel at your own, you know. Come on, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah no, yeah, that's definitely my dick. Three times over. I don't. You didn't have to go one by one. So is this the part where Chris shows him pictures of his dick now? So you excited too? Oh my god. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was like that whole pause. Are you excited too? I was like, what the? Then be excited for. I mean, like. Muhammad is actually the star of this episode, which makes for a shitty segment because he's the first predator and it all goes downhill from here. The first half of this investigation that I'm currently covering pales in comparison to the second half. Muhammad gets baited hard throughout this entire interview because he started by making up a story. Just yes. to say, come in. To pretending that he doesn't know what's being talked about. Who is this? To now giving his alibi as to why it's not him. This is your chat with a girl who told you she was 13. When would that? This Bruh, they already got photos of you. You've already admitted to everything. So we just gonna act like we we have amnesia all of a sudden, right? Like that's what I'm saying. If they already have pictures of you, you're supposed to lie. But you didn't. At least you had a mustache in those photos. You could have you could have passed it off as somebody else. That would have probably been believable, but But you didn't lie. Now I'm not giving it. What am I saying? I'm not giving any advice. This isn't something new. We've all seen the show. I mean, I'm just saying, like, he was just completely honest about it, but it's just hard to believe that he actually tried to deny that he did anything when he sent those photos. He even went ahead and identified his own dick. Like, come on, at least commit. See it through, bro. This particular one was December 3rd at 10.32 and 29 seconds in the morning. I was in the office at this time. I don't chat in the morning. You don't chat in the morning? No. Oh. Well, here, right here, you say you're in your office. So that's consistent with what you just told me. <laughs> I can't, bro. No, for real. I can't. So I'm, in, I'm in the office. I couldn't, it's like, oh, look, it says right here, you said that you're in the office. Man, he is true. He, this has got to be the most truthful guy I've seen on To Catch a Predator. The dude is just saying he committed every, well, except for those guys who cry on camera and saying that they've never done this before. But, you know, this guy just contradicts himself at every turn and... I can't say anything. Which, as you can see, didn't go as planned. You asked her what she's doing. She said she's sleeping on her back. And you say sleep on your back and open them wide open. open. What did you mean by that? What did you mean by that, Muhammad? That's what I is that such a weird follow-up message to that? Yeah. Sleep on your back and open them wide open. He's coming in for a landing, apparently. He's 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 flying over states, bro. Like. <sighs> <sighs> it's a bad joke. Terrible. I'm, I'm sorry. Don't subscribe. But she's asleep. And then Muhammad moves into denial, which is amazing to watch as it progresses. I don't really know much about licking and stuff. Then you say, you'd like to try? She says, might be interesting. I will never say to someone like that. Never. Come on, bro. Come on, you can do better than this. It will be nice. I think you will love it. Never. 
Never, ever. You know, I'm an Egyptian, I'm Muslim, I don't do this stuff. We'll lick you all over. So is it the Egyptian or Muslim side that excludes you from this? I'll never get that defense. Oh, I'm this certain thing, so I'm 100% not capable of committing. But, now I just watched a documentary. And it was on um, Crime Watch Daily, you know, Chris Hansen, you know, big fan. But um, there was a news story about a Egyptian Muslim who had, you know, um, harmed his two daughters in the back of a taxi cab. Now, apparently that he was into arranged marriage and his wife was 14, 15 at the time. So for him to go ahead and say that, it not only f goes in line with the kind of culture they have it also says that also paints you to be like you know you find that this kind of thing is okay unless you know your family kind of grew up with that or unless your family kind of grew up with the age of consent i listen i don't know i don't know i'm just list i'm just going off of what i heard on crime watch daily and the whole documentary and whatnot but i'm just saying that doesn't paint a good look for you bro it, it, it really doesn't committing this crime if 2018 has taught us anything it's that anybody can be a bad person and it's funny because you hear this excuse all the time on tcat i would never do this i'm a parent oh you're a parent okay well it's apparent that you're a shitty one i would never do this i'm religious that's like saying oh i would never do this i have a vague set of morals that i'm reminded of every now and then i'm chris hansen with dateline nbc and we're doing a story on men who try to meet underage Kids online. Kids online. Dab. Dab. Oh, you're not dabbing. Okay, my bad. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alex Schultz. And I'm Andrew Cooper. In 2015, we took a surf trip to Bali, Indonesia, and saw firsthand just how bad the world's plastic pollution crisis really is. <laughs> Our next predator in line is Brian. Screen name: Brian three one two eight two. Online, Dora uses the screen name Bryman3. I'm going to assume this isn't your good side. Maybe I'm just really insecure uh, to the point where I won't just put any picture out of me. No one's going to want to chat with that labia on your neck, Brian. The decoy responds. Did you teach her the same things you're going to teach me? He replies. I sure did. And she loved it. Okay, sidebar. I've mentioned this once before. Does Dateline try to find a narrator that fits the person chatting because muhammad had a narrator that was clearly foreign but you will need to open your legs all the way brian just has some old white dude and she loved it if that is the case where they try to vaguely have some sort of similar narrator i why what's the point of that he made a point of stopping for some supplies like i just stopped the food line and what all did you get at food? I got Mountain Dew and a box of condoms. Mountain Dew and a box of condoms. You know, you look like you'd buy Mountain Dew and a box of condoms. That's like the vibe you give off. Classic Brian Man. Our next predator in line is William. Screen name, the names they give are dumb. I don't know. Don't ask. William is a Taekwondo instructor. You need to know that for a joke I'm going to say later. William shows up and he's super cautious when he approaches the house. And the only way he says he'll go inside is if the decoy flashes him. Just one titty! Just one! Open the door up for me. Real quick! Come here! Janet Jackson! Obviously, the decoy is a prude, and uh, William scatters. Decides it's time to move out, and the Flagler Beach police move in. Get on the ground! I said get on the ground! Get on the ground! I didn't do anything! Come on, dude, I didn't do anything! I did not do anything yet! 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 I, I was just showing her how to properly execute a hammer fist! That's it! Oh, I was trying to show her. I didn't do anything yet. Mr. GT, stop. You're, you're jacking off whatever imaginary friend is probably standing there. Please don't. And she loved it. By this point, we all know that predators are really unpredictable at this point, And they don't really uh, go off logic a lot. Because it always confuses me when a guy shows up and then all of a sudden he's like, wait. They all touch on it very little. They're like, wait. You cop? No. Okay. Fucking decoys on the phone. Like, okay, you're gonna go down 3.2 miles down west for you're gonna take a sharp right, okay? You're gonna go to US 54 Highway. If you've gone to the McDonald's, you've gone too far, okay? It's a big white blue house. Wait, 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 wait. Why do you? You don't drive. 
Why do you know direction so well? I read the rest of William's chat and normally I would show a few excerpts, you know, make a few jokes. We all giggle. But instead, I just wasted 15 minutes reading. Was that a big load? Did you see that first big load? Was that a bigger load than your ex? I have big loads. And she loved I chat with, I mean, anybody, anybody. Do you send just anybody pictures? Yeah, pretty much. And of you masturbating? Um, yeah, that's unfortunate. Our next. It's unfortunate. Okay. Yeah, sure. That's, that's completely unfortunate. Yeah, it's all, it's unfortunate when somebody, you know, sends one by accident. That's, that's unfortunate. To send it personally, that's, that's quite unfortunate for you, especially since you purposely sent it to what was supposedly a underage female. Mm. Unfortunate indeed. And I'll go ahead and say that that first one, I have not done that myself. I have not. This is just examples. I know that you're having your judging eyes on me, and to tell you the truth, I don't appreciate it. Next predator in line is Deepak. Screen name, Love Source 7. When the decoy tells him she's 13, he writes, Wow, you too young, babe. You shouldn't be out here. A lot of perverts in here. So after all this, you'd think he'd know better than to show up at a stranger's house. Not this guy. This science... Wait, what the fuck? This guy's a fuck... <laughs> Fucking magician! Look at those flowers! Look at this shit! He's just walking, hands in his pockets. Calm down, David Blaine! Hey, you like flowers? Poof! So we have chocolate and flowers. Very nice. You're too young, babe. You shouldn't be out here. A lot of perverts in here. What did you mean by that? There aren't people that only have sex with you. People like yourself. No, I don't want to have sex That response took three seconds too long, Deepak. Way too long. People that only have sex with you. People like yourself. No, I don't want to lie. Did you bring condoms? Don't. Yes. Damn it. What else is in there besides condoms? Uh, a lotion. So why would you bring... Wait, 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 wait one second, Chris. My <laughs> man had condoms and lotion with him too? Yeah, What's the lotion for? Roses, chocolate, condoms, Lotion. Chris Angel, are you watching? Some of these guys have really long chats. I don't think I've ever touched on that. Sometimes PJ gets lucky and a guy, you know, gets right to it and he goes to the house. Other guys have conversations for days, weeks. Deepak chatted for a straight month. And as you can imagine, it's not really my choice of reading material. And Deepak is so creepy in the chat, but he's not like overtly creepy. Through the chat, he plays this hero character, warning the girl of dangerous perverts and almost playing like a, like an overprotective father figure. Then he slowly begins to unveil that he himself might be who he wants this girl to avoid. It's like the Hulk slowly turning green, telling everybody nearby to get the fuck out. That's what I mean by creepy. Like he's like, Oh, you gotta look out for these guys. A lot of perverts, you know, a lot of guys that'll take advantage of you out here. You know, it could even be me. He says that shit. He's like, you know, I, even I might be one. What? What? Hello? But like I was talking about, they talk about- I mean, but still, even your parents kind of give you that kind of um, speech. It's like, oh, it could be even somebody like me. I mean, like, I, I mean, I mean, yeah, that's kind of like, that's kind of something. That's kind of like a, a usual thing when it comes to these kind of talks. But in this case, well, it's just, why? What the most boring fucking shit. They start naming off dog shit music they like and Deepak says, I love the song Baby of Mine by Alison Krauss. It reminds me of you. Now, I'm not doubting that this song reminded you of her. I just, I don't think you looked at the irony of this. Well, she lu lured me, I would say that. Run that by me again. You drove from West Palm Beach up here three and a half to four hours, got chocolates, flowers, and lotion and condoms because you were going to come up to have sex with her. Is that, that pretty accurate? That's right. Our the following video is controversial and may be offensive to some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi, my our next predator in line. That, the thing I never understood with these predators is just that who drives three hours for sex? Like that could that blows my mind. Like I don't even drive three hours for car parts. Even if like say you're gonna meet me halfway, that's a different story. But three hours is three hours. That's from here to Miami. I'm not. 
No. I mean... There's no way... I don't... I would never drive three hours for any type of engagement. You see that you meet me halfway or you're closer. Other than that, I three hours? Nah, bro. <laughs> you're gonna have to give me gas money. I'm sorry. Mine is Anthony, screen name Italian Lover 37. And not only does his screen name sound like something from Subway, but he's also built like a six inch. Now, Anthony, very opposite. <laughs> oh, wait a minute now. Cuts all small talk and has the decoys address ready for blow. I hope he's not wearing the same shirt as me. I'm gonna have to change. Not to mention, the guy lives only 10 minutes away. Perverted Justice literally nabbed this guy in like half an hour from start to finish. What are you looking for? I don't know. You? 10 minutes away. See, that is reasonable. You're gonna go ahead and rid the place of perverts and pedophiles. It's just better just to do it within your own community. Make it a safe me if you're gonna be going from place to place to place. Well, hot sex, what else? <laughs> there wasn't an LOL in that message, by the way. Yet the narrator chose to laugh anyways. Are you improving Predator's chats? How do I know you're not a cop? Duh, I don't know. How do I know you're not my dad setting me up? Because that would be really weird if your dad did that, saying a bunch of salacious things to you, just to be like, ha! I knew you were gay. Tell me. The thing is, is that parents have already done this. As much as it's weird, somehow it comes out with very positive-ish results, I guess. What's going on? Nothing. I was just gonna... Just gonna what? Talk to the kid. What were you gonna talk about? I don't know. Baseball. Baseball. Football. Anything else? This kid? <laughs> Our next predator in line is David, screen name Dave Cruz 2003. Apparently David is a really good boxer because he's 28 and 0 with 21 knockouts. Now I'm not gonna call bullshit, but David, look at this photo. Obviously it's blurred, but just look at like the torso and the arms. It looks like he just fucking left Auschwitz. I don't usually throw the Holocaust jokes. I'm not the fucking, I'm not the, the hatred. And I'm really not trying to be funny on that. I just, that's literally what I thought of when I saw this picture. Like a corpse. Maybe he's in the cruiserweight division or something. I don't know. I don't shit about boxing. Whatever. What's happening? Nothing much. Yeah? What you doing here? Uh, just uh, checking the place out. What, are you thinking of buying it or? Uh, no, no, I'm just no. looking really. <laughs> yeah. Why is there like an open house going on today? No, well, there is sort of an open house going on, but it's sort of a different open house. Okay, Chris. Okay, okay. You get a, you get applause on that one, Chris. All right. Very nice. Very nice. Ironically enough, the majority of guys that show up in this episode look like fish. I know this because every guy I kept seeing, I was like, oh, let me make a, like, let me make a fish joke. And then I saw the next guy, and I was like, oh, I could totally make a fish joke there, like a pun or something. And then I keep seeing guys, I'm like, wait a minute, what is happening? Why am I trying to write this script and all I can think of is under the sea? I need to turn the battery off in my car. I swear oh my right god. I'm, I'm, my car's gonna die, I'm serious. Why did you leave the lights on your car anyway? You were gonna pick this girl up? Uh, yeah. And take her where? Or, um, why did you have them on in broad daylight? It seems like your lights weren't the only thing left turned on. Our next predator in line is Charles. Screen name, his name, 98. Our next visitor arrives with the top down on his custom convertible. That has gotta be a kick car. No way that... <sighs> AC Cobra, or Shelby Cobras are very expensive. Original ones, not kick cars. But I'm just saying. Why? You probably have some good money. Why would you do this? Why? Why? Real quick, um, you know how many people probably know you have this car? Especially if you're a local and a volunteer firefighter. I'm talking shit because the guy says he has like 12, 13 cars. Could have just drove your shitty Jeep. There's probably like 80 shitty Jeeps in that town. But there's probably only- He's not lying. I live in an area where there's a lot of like it's close to the it's close to the water and there's a lot and i mean a lot of jeeps my friend used to have one his sister has a his sister has a jeep 
until he got rid of it for a turbo diesel. I'm just saying that there are a lot of Jeeps in this area. I can't go down to the store and not see a Jeep. I mean, in Florida, the thing is you got to learn. There are Jeeps. There are jacked up trucks. That there are probably a lot of gun toting, gator tail eating people in this area. And I can't get enough of it. I'm just saying. Like, Florida is just a very too interesting of a place for me to say I'm going to live elsewhere. You've read the, head you've read the headlines. Some are disturbing, some are just completely and utterly funny. Only one hot red custom convertible. I know you want to show off, but it's a fucking teenager. She's psyched you can drive. She doesn't give a fuck about what it is. Charles just walks out as soon as he sees Chris. So with nothing to go off of, I just went to his chat. And Greg's age really shows with his chat. It might be his obnoxious use of LOL fully capitalized at points where it really doesn't make sense. His dirty talk is also a little off and a bit outdated, I'd say. I mean, he dirty talks are saying shit like, were you a little damp? Bet you're damp now. Just lightly rub until it gets damp, then ease one in. Charles says damp. What am I, a basement? Oh my gosh, baby, you're so fucking damp. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot my vagina has stalagmites. Get the fuck out of my house. You're so fucking damp right now. LOL. Our next predator in line is Brian. Screen name, Mandarin Guy 78 So, what do you want to do? I don't care. Do you have any ideas? <laughs> softer than puppy toes my dude <laughs> talking this big old game behind the keyboard and then responding like a middle schooler all right well, whatever you want to do keep talking your shit bro keep that same energy you know i'm gonna oh, we're gonna fuck then made arrangements um for you to come here and and have sex together it wasn't sex yeah you said right. you know you were gonna do some sexual things okay I didn't, I didn't i didn't know what you meant by that. yeah like fingering and stuff like that so that's what you came to do yeah, okay yes. I didn't, I thought you were talking about it, of course, because it's a number. Right. Just letting you know, I'm not some sick f It's worse because they're women. I'm just saying, like, I'm not throwing anything anywhere. But I'm just saying is that my mom, she works in the correctional facility. And she says that the female cops are worse than the men. Meaning that they're more tougher than men. And when I see this, and the fact that he came over to see a underage girl and they put him in the seat in the same room with two female police officers there's no way that they're gonna let him go get and get away it's just they're going to be throwing the book at him they're making sure he goes down for this and i find that's just very that's appropriate honestly i feel like that's very appropriate fuck or anything you know it's I was just there for a little, you know, Scooby Doo pop pop. Maybe a little boom boom boom. But it pop pop pop. Skrrr. This series can't be good for my mental state. And that is actually the end of episode 21. There actually is one more guy in the sting, but he just goes to the beach and she's like, oh my gosh, look at my kite. And he's like, yeah, but can we like fuck? And she's like, oh my gosh, look at the kite. And he's like, yeah, but like my dick's hard. And she's like, oh God, look at the kite. If you did enjoy the episode, please leave a like so I know that you give a fuck. Subscribe because I will actually have more content coming your way. Shout out to my patrons, steady supporting me if you don't know on my page. Oh, okay. That was Mr. GG. How to Catch a Predator. She lured me. Episode 21. Oh boy. It's been a minute. And I really, it's like every time I see a video, I. I like to see these predators get caught and come up with the most ridiculous of excuses I have ever seen. And his his jokes are really funny too. Like the Spidey Nemo bit, that was that was <laughs> that was funny. But uh, thank you guys for watching this been by Mission. If you want to go watch the original video and support Mr. GG on his channel and or on his Patreon, I'll leave the links down in the description down below. Please help your boy out. And also, um, subscribe, like, share, and comment down on my videos. It helps a lot. Try to build the channel up. I cannot speak to it. It is like 12 o'clock, and I'm trying to 
you you already know I don't do scripts. I just go with the flow. But uh yeah, thank you guys for watching. This has been Vibe Nation. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Oh, there it comes to me. Um, and I will, and I have got two request videos coming out, and um, and a few more videos coming out. I'm gonna try to like up my upload. I, I haven't been doing anything as much lately. I've been trying. I've been recording a lot, so hopefully, I can go ahead and deliver. So I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.